Konnichiwa. Hello everyone. This is Christopher and this is a continuation of my coffee uh, wandering. So today um, I'd like to show you uh, the coffee that I have right now and also talk a little bit about where I get my coffee from. So um, this is my coffee library on the table. It's kind of hard to show you everything, so I have two cameras today. Um, this wonderful pile, this is two kilos of uh, Sumatra Lintong that have been uh, dried on African beds. Really nice stuff. Uh, this is some, Kong, some coffee from Congo. Uh, where they're having all the horrible issues with um, Ebola right now, unfortunately. Um, this is some coffee from Uganda. Um, here's my Thai collection. So this is a very nice organic uh, coffee called Om Khoi um, from Chiang Mai. And um, this one is uh, another Thai coffee, another, these are all pea berries in this pack, and um, this is another Thai from my Thai collection pea berries. Uh, then I have over here the last of my Cameroon, which has been a really wonderful uh, go as, as it lasted, but for right now, Cameroon is kind of in bad state, and hopefully, there'll be some more good coffee out of there. Some double A Kenyas, just run of the mill. Dub, um, you know, everybody's uh, beans mixed up in one, but they turn out pretty well. Um, for good measure, some Kenya ADs, which are just one grade down in size from the Kenya double A's. And a little bit of uh, Brazilian pea berries left. These are just smidgens. Some Burundis and some uh, Sky Hill from Rwanda. So that's what I'm sitting on right now. Uh, so that to... To answer the question that I had from several people, uh, where do I get my coffee? Uh, so rather than giving you some sort of um, advertisement for uh, somebody's coffee somewhere, the first place I would start and that I started when I started roasting two years ago was to ask somebody who roasted locally if he would share, he or she, uh, would share some beans with you. Um, so that's my number one tip. Uh, if you're nice and friendly and don't look like you're going to put them out of business and sh steal all their secrets, uh, most people will share beans with you gladly. Um, so that was how I got started. And um, then the other thing I have to say is just do a search on the internet. So Google is your friend here. And, uh, you know, in, I've done this in the U.S. and in Japan, and I found lots of sources for green coffee all over the place. Uh, what I tend, one of the considerations that I make is I think about the enemies of coffee. So even there are lots of enemies of roasted coffee. Basically, once you roast coffee, it's the, the time, the, the clock is ticking and you need to drink it pretty soon. Um, so green coffee, I find, although this is a big subject of debate these days, um, has a good um, storage potential. So the enemies of green coffee are humidity, light, temperature, and the fluctuations of those. Um, I don't keep my coffee here on the table in the kitchen. I keep it in the darkest and coolest room in the house, which I can't really show you on film very well. So I'm not there today. Um, but I keep those factors in mind when I'm picking who I'm buying my beans from. So uh, I kind of look, try to get a feel for whether the people who are selling me the coffee might be a little bit careful about those considerations. So I'm not usually looking for somebody who, I don't know who this person is and they're only selling one kind of bean and it looks like it's from their collection and who knows how long they've been sitting on it and where it's been and if it's was in their attic or in their storage shed and got all dried out or too moldy or something like that. So that's one consideration that I would that I make. Um, 
And, and the other thing that I'd say is I kind of look for websites that are diamonds in the rough. So if a website is too beautiful and the coffee photographs and the pictures of the places where they're growing it and the flowery descriptions of the coffee and how it was grown and, and processed and all that is there, um, sometimes I'm a little bit uh, more reluctant to buy from those places than I am from a place that has obviously cut and paste, um, pasted text from somebody else's website or so one of the places I bought coffee uh, doesn't give you any information, just the name, and you go look it up on your own and find out where it's from and what its history is. Um, but those are the kind of places that I tend to like. Um, another consideration, um, going back to the local roasters, is um, somebody who roasts coffee on their own. A lot of these places that sell internet on, uh, sell green beans on the internet also sell roasted beans, sometimes not on the same website, but you can kind of figure out the same address and everything that they're the same people. Uh, another thing that happens often is that these people also sell very large quantities like big burlap bags that are 60 kilos or 100 and some odd pounds. Um, and where, whereas wholesalers probably aren't so happy to do business with little guys like you and me who might just buy a kilo or even less. Uh, usually uh, one kilo is my minimum purchase of one kind of coffee. Um, but I know other people who probably want to go down into the 500 gram range, like a pound. Um, but uh, a lot of wholesalers don't want to be bothered with that. So um, sometimes they have separate websites for um, plain old people like you and me. Sometimes they sell their, their one kilo batches in, on places like Amazon. So um, that's the sort of thing that I'm looking for. Thank you very much for all your views and likes and comments on my website and please, uh, I mean my, my videos and um, please by all means um, keep your questions and comments coming. Thank you for watching.